Good morning. Welcome to Fork and a Loaf. My name is Heather, and I'm continuing on with um, food storage and using your food storage and doing all that fun stuff. Um, I, it's kind of one of my passions in life. Today, uh, I've had a little bit of a cold, so excuse the <laughs> the congested noise. I'll try not to snarf in your ears. Um, today, I am going to do a making breakfast sausage. And I know that um, we've priced it out and going to our U.S. Chef Foods, which used to be cash and carry, and then it was something else. I think it's changed hands a couple times, but I think now it's called U.S. Chef Foods. But if you go into their freezer area, <clears throat> they have these three pound chubs of ground pork. Uh, minimally processed, contains no artificial ingredients. Let me see what are the ingredients. There's no ingredients, so I'm assuming it is just ground pork. Um, and it is so easy to make breakfast sausage. And I think, I, I, you know, I'm looking at a lot of the stuff that I like to cook from scratch. And um, I, under, I don't understand why it ever stopped because they're so easy. And some of the stuff that you buy has so many different things in it like msg or maltodextrin or all these things that really i don't feel are good for our bodies or nitrates or nitrate trites or sugar or table salt i like using um more of a nutrient dense salt versus table salt table salt i understand is really not good for you and so i'm going to just point you down i'm probably going to go to a voiceover because I'm gonna have my mixer going, which is gonna have a lot of noise. I've never done a voiceover and I kinda of wanna try it. So I'm gonna take you along on that adventure. Okay, so here I'm using pork. You can use any kind of ground meat you want. You can use ground beef, ground, I've heard people using ground venison to make sausage, ground turkey, ground chicken, whatever you want. I'm gonna take a, a pound off of this cause I want to make some chorizo sausage with it. So just one pound for that, and then I'm gonna use the rest for the sausage. I'm gonna dump that right in my mixer. Sage is kind of your key herb. You don't have to use sage, like if you don't like it, you're just not gonna get the breakfast sausage flavor. And I usually use about one tablespoon of sage per pound. Sometimes I go a little lighter, sometimes I go a little heavier. Cayenne pepper has become my new favorite thing. I found out that cayenne has all these good properties and everything, so I've started using it. And I put in about a half a teaspoon per pound. I don't like it too hot, but I like there to be a little bit of a kick. And my very favorite, these are Korean chili flakes. And I put in about a half a teaspoon per pound. I love red Korean chili flakes. And I think they're kind of a secret ingredient. Like they're something that um, I never would have thought to put in them before, but now that I do, I love them in there. So that's about a half a teaspoon of pepper. Salt, you do you. If you like less salt, do less salt. I do a little bit more salt. I love, so Jimmy Dean's Natural is probably my favorite sausage. So here, um, I'm trying to make it as close to that as possible. White pepper has in my opinion, gives it the most flavor as far as a breakfast sauce. I mean, I, I think that white pepper is kind of one of those secret ingredients as well. Um, so I put that in there and here I almost forgot to put paprika in it. And we're just going to put in about a half a teaspoon per pound. I'll make sure I write the directions down below and make sure you get all the ingredients. Um, I try to put in one egg per pound. I've tried it without egg. It works. Uh, it's just, it, it, it kind of seems to retain moisture with the egg in it, whereas without the egg, it can be kind of dry. Uh, maple syrup, I only put in about a tablespoon at the most of the maple syrup. I have put more maple syrup in it. It's okay. I don't really love sweet sausage. I like it to be, you know, more like your typical breakfast sausage. So here I'm going to mix it up and... You want to mix it well, but you don't want to overmix it. Not quite sure why. I've never tried. 
Um, but you want to make sure that everything is well incorporated so you don't bite into a big old bite of sage or a very bland bite with nothing in it. Remember too, this is a recipe that you can do with it whatever you want to. If you don't like sage, I know you can use, I've seen people use basil. I've seen people use Italian seasoning. Um, if you do fennel and Italian seasoning instead of sage, you can come up with something more like a, an Italian sausage. Um, you can play with the ingredients, take out the white pepper. I personally love the white pepper in it. Um, you can not put any salt in it at all if you're trying to retain your, or, you know, like control your salt or your sweetener and uh, really do what works for you. If you don't like any sugar at it all, in it at all, don't put the maple syrup in it. Um, for me, these are just ingredients that I've put together to kind of resemble that Jimmy Dean sausage closest. Now here I am going to use my quarter cup scoop and I'm going to just scoop out a bunch of scoops. And you don't need a ton of room. It's okay if they touch. They're going to shrink um, no matter how flat or big I've made them. They all shrink up to about the same size. I mean, if I were to put more meat into the scoop, I'm sure I could have bigger ones, but this is something I do to prep for the week. So I have easy reach and easy grab and go lunches or breakfasts that I can just throw into a bag and take to work with me. And they're protein, homemade, clean ingredients. In an ideal world, it would be, you know, a pasture raised pork that I've raised myself, but I'm not there yet. <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> I've seen people do, um, like, I think it'd be really cool to do like a, an elk sausage. Oh, I love elk. Here I'm going to put, I'm trying something different. Normally I will just lay them down and flatten them out with my fingers. Here I put that piece of parchment paper over to kind of hold it and I'm using this to flatten it and it looks like it did a fabulous job and it really kind of did. So I just kind of press it down a little bit more. See, there's still a little bit of room between most of them. Those ones that are touching, not a big deal. They're going to shrink. This is just to add a little weight to the top to keep it from puffing up too much as it's cooking. And it's my cast iron muffin tin. So now I'm just going to put it in the oven. I've preheated my oven to 325 and I'm going to cook it in there for about 20 minutes. And when I pull it out, I'm going to check the temp. I'm going to make sure that it reaches 165 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know what that would be in Celsius. Um, and just make sure the internal temperature is at 165 and you're safe. With pork, I understand you only have to really get to 140. But because it's ground pork, I'm going to make it go to 165. So I had some leftover, like not a ton that didn't fit on that tray. So I'm going to fry them up and I'm going to just show you the difference between frying them and baking them. I like to bake them because I can do tons of them at once. Frying them like, takes forever and I have to have, it makes a mess and yeah. So I'm going to use the same size. I'm going to have to pat them out with my hands because uh, I don't have any way to flatten them out otherwise. And I'm just going to put them on a hot frying pan. I don't know how hot that pan is but I think it sizzled. Putting the egg in it will make it a little bit softer, kind of like it is. There's nothing like oatmeal or crackers or breadcrumbs or anything like that in it either. So it's not like it's going to meatloaf. It's not going to be like a meatloaf type. And I got about four patties. So I had what a cup of meat stuff left. <laughs> I let these patties cook for about four minutes on each side and this is the first four minutes and I'm just giving it a little press just to kind of keep it flat they like to really uh, pucker or uh, shrink back so I just kind of flatten them out just a little bit and you can see there's a lot of grease in that pan <laughs> One of the things about my food storage is, you know, that storing what you eat, eating what you store. I, I don't keep a year supply of meat in my freezer. Um, I actually need to try freeze drying some of this stuff. I haven't quite done that yet. Um, that's on my bucket list. 
but all the herbs and spices, I buy those in bulk, so I always have those kinds of things on hand. The meat, I buy, I usually try to keep about six months worth of meat in my freezer. Um, and that, and, and then I do have canned meats as well, so it's not like it's the only thing we're going to eat is with the six months that's in my freezer. Um, but this is ground pork is one of those things that I like to keep on hand. I use it in my sausage patties or ground sausage. I've made crit biscuits and gravy with this sausage. It's fabulous. Um, I use it in meatballs. I'll do half meat, half ground beef and half ground pork. I'll use it in, um, lasagna. Lasagna is usually half and half. My meatloaf, I've done it, my meatloaf, half pork and half ground beef. And I personally like the texture and the flavor of the pork with the um, sausage just a little bit better than uh, like beef or some of those other normal ground meats. Here I'm just scraping my pan. It's there's natural sugars in there plus the maple syrup that I put in there and they have a tendency to create a stick to the bottom of your pan no matter what. And so if I just scrape it a little bit, it kind of helps remove the stuff that creates the sticky on the bottom of the pan. So now here I've pulled it out of the oven. Um, I'm going to temp it. They're not as browned as they would be if I were to fry them, which is okay because when I reheat them, I'm going to put them on the same pan that I use to fry my egg or um, if I want to heat them up, I use a frying pan. And so that gives it that brown that I'm looking for. And these were way hot. They were, I want to say they're closer to 180 degrees versus 165, which I'm okay with that. It doesn't really hurt anything. So here I make my very favorite breakfast sandwich. Um, I've toasted a piece of my homemade sourdough bread. That's a half whole wheat, half white sourdough bread. Put on some butter and some mustard. I put on some um, Havarti cheese. And then I'm going to use one of those sausage patties that I just fried. And now I just added a hard fried egg that I used that sausage pan, the pan that I just fried the sausage in. Um, and I made a sandwich. This is a comparison of the fried versus the baked. You've got your fried on the right and your baked on the left. So to wrap this video up, we got snow. Super excited. My dog had a blast. He loves this kind of weather. And if you, here in just a sec, I'll show you my kale. Thank you for joining me on this adventure of a fork in the loaf. If you like this kind of video, give me a thumbs up, um, hit subscribe, share this with your friends on social media, and thanks for joining me.